Namaste. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you, as well as congratulate TEDx Birgans for such a wonderful platform. So please give a round of applause for TEDx Birgans. <laughs> My name is Kiran Nepali. And I am from a Gandharva family. They are the line of Gandharva Sarangi players in my family, and I'm proud to say I'm the third generation Sarangi player. <laughs> and also, I'm so much fortunate to hold that dignity to continue as a Sarangi player. And I'm also a part of Kutumba. I hope you all know the band. And also, I play with Bipul Chetri. <laughs> and let me tell you about this instrument, Sarangi. How many of you know about this instrument? That's very less. <laughs> So uh, this is a Nepalese traditional folk instrument. This is made out of a single piece of wood, handcrafted. There's a two sound hole. One is covered with skin. I have a Komodo dragon skin here. The neck and the head. It's a Boeing instrument. But let me ask you, how many of you knew, know that how it is played? Any idea? Any idea? So this is one of the very few instruments in the world that is played with nails. We don't press the string, it's played with the nails. This instrument belonged to Gandharvas. But I'm sorry to say that this is a folk instrument this belongs to all Nepalese, isn't it? Isn't it? The folk music and the folk culture doesn't belong to any community or any person. It belongs to the nation. So once again, this instrument was practiced by Gandharva. Gandharvas are the musical community of Nepal. We traveled hills and plains, telling stories, delivering messages. We were the main source of entertainment back then. But as we all know, video killed the radio stars, isn't it? The development of the communication and the media slowed down the practice of this tradition. So most of the Gandharvas have left this storytelling or forgot this heritage. Uh, let me tell you my story as a Sarangi player. I told you earlier that I was so fortunate to play the instrument, but I didn't play the instrument when I was very young. Unlike other people, I was more onto guitar. I started playing Sarangi only before 10 years. And then, I wanted to learn this instrument back then. My father used to play, he still plays the sarangi, and I want to try that instrument. I went and lift the instrument and I played, but my father said, you don't play the instrument, because he wanted me to study and get a job, get a better life. My father never had a better life with the music playing sarangi. So, we all have gone through this process of discrimination between the caste, isn't it? So Gandhava were taken as untouchable caste. So my father wanted me to get away of it and 
study and get a job. Even my mom wanted me to be a lawyer. But uh, as we all know that the fate is written. One day I was uh, watching my father playing sarangi and there were a couple of students playing it, trying to play it. And I was looking at them and thought, I could do better, I think. So I went to my mom and asked if there was a sarangi lying somewhere. The next morning, my mom handed over me a sarangi that was lying under the bed, don't know when, waiting to be played maybe. And then I silently started playing sarangi. My late grandfather was still alive back then. He saw me trying to play the instrument. He was very old though, who couldn't play better. But he was guiding me all the time. And he was teaching me a lot of traditional songs, folk songs, and teaching me the practice. Even he taught me a couple of uh, other uh, songs about God and Goddess. So how I started playing the sarangi. Do you want to listen to a song that I first ever learned in sarangi? So that was the first song I ever learned in Sarangi. And then I started playing. I was already a musician. I used to play with lots of bands. And I was looking for friends to jam with, play with. And one happened to be my dear friend, Mr. Rubin Kumar Shrestha. He is the flute player of Kutumba. This is about 10 years back. Uh, about 10 years back. It, this, this was in 2008. So he told me if I wanted to jam with Kutumba, they used to feature a new artist. And then I said, I really want to play. And then I went to the band, had a little bit of practice session, and then I still remember that day, the event was at Gurukul, and it was called Chains again. So in that Chains concert, I played for a lot of people. That was my first public appearance as a sarangi player. And then uh, after about three months, yeah, about three months, I got call from Mr. Pabit Kumar, sorry, Mr. Pabit Marjan, the spokesperson of Kutumba, and he said like, do you want to go on a tour with us? I said, why not? So I went to the practice room. We had a practice session about a week. Then I went on a tour with the band to Janakpur. And this was my first ever public appearance outside <laughs> in Janakpur temple in front of 7,000 people. We kept on playing a lot of concerts. And I was fortunate even to play in Man City Stadium in Manchester, the football club. <laughs> I guess that was the first ever sarangi being played in football stadium. <laughs> and I also, uh, got featured in Coke Studio. <laughs> and uh, this is the video from Playing for Change, where they feature artists from all around the world. So I feel myself very much lucky and fortunate to be playing this 
instrument, our Nepali heritage. We used to sit down on a chair or a ground, play the songs, play the melodies, and people have in mind that sarangi is for sad songs. Usually when I talk to people about sarangi, especially the old generation, they will say to me that, oh, this is a very sad singing instrument. I wanted to change that, but how? So I was thinking one day, I want to play or present sarangi differently. So I came up with an idea of sarangi on a stand. So this is the first ever thing, sarangi being played on a stand. Okay, let me ask you a question. How many of you play guitar here? How many of you play? How many have, of you have seen your friends or your circle people playing guitar? Okay. Why do you think we get guitarists in every knocks and corner? Have an idea? Because this playing on a bigger stage, bigger light, bigger sound, isn't it? So we thought of why not changing our old instrument into something like this. Playing on a bigger stage, playing on a bigger sound, playing on a bigger light to make it cool again, isn't it? I was already a guitar player. I played with so many bands and rock bands, a lot of people. So I wanted to add more feature on it. So I started adding up all my pedals to the sarangi to bring out the coolness back again. In this journey, I got a lot of queries, a lot of questions, especially from the youth, how we can continue playing the instrument. And the problem even I faced when I was playing sarangi was to get a proper professional sarangi, which was not there because the practice of sarangi playing was slowly disappearing. So like with that thing, the craftsmen were also leaving their profession because the people who were making the sarangi shifted themselves to make some furniture where they're making good money. So we were having we ha we were having hard time getting the instrument and providing it to the professional sarangi players who want to continue playing sarangi. So I was talking to my family, my friends, that how we can improve it. And there was my cousin brother. And he came to me and said, oh, I used to make sarangi. Really? When? About 20 years back. I was like, really? Can you make it again? He said, like, I can try. So um, we brought a log of wood, brought the equipments, and then after three days, he handed over me a raw sarangi. So this is the beginning of our project sarangi. So project sarangi started off with a single piece of raw sarangi. And then I would like to introduce Mr. Dilbadur Gandharva who restarted making the sarangi after 25 years. <laughs> he is continuously making the instrument as well as teaching the youth and inspiring other people to come and play, come and make the instrument. So in these three years, we have provided sarangi to so many new students. I was thinking, how can we bring this sarangi player together? I knew only a few were playing OK. So I started sending messages to them, but the message flew like wildfire. So many people messaged me back that they want to be part of this game. So I thought of why not creating an event, not for 
all the people, but at least for the Sarangi players who can showcase their talent, where we can really enhance their playing, support them, bring on a stage. So we created this platform called Jamarko. The thing that made us very happy was we had almost 30 Sarangi players on one stage. <laughs> and the, adding on that, something that made us very happy and proud were these young girls coming up and playing Sarangi. We're talking about women empowerment. We're talking about women participation. But did you know that still practice of music for the women is restricted in so many places? So we are very much happy to see the women playing the Sarangi. And again, we were very much proud to bring the first ever woman folk band, Sritara, to be the part of Jamarko. So Jamarko was not just about Sarangi playing. We wanted to show the Sarangi players the hardship of making an instrument. It takes a lot of hard work to carve this instrument from a single piece of wood. So we're coming up with project Sarangi Center. A common ground to share our knowledge, share our experience on Sarangi. It's not just sharing, but it's a learning ground as well. Not only for Sarangi playing, but also Sarangi making. We're talking about economic growth all the time, aren't we? Aren't we talking about the economic growth, the sustainability, isn't it? And the first thing I want to say is, we need to promote the craftsmen of Nepal, not just Sarangi, different thing. We see a lot of people going abroad, but the thing that we're missing is our basic things, like the craftsmen, like the carpenters. We are very much rich in our heritage on the same ground, in the same center, we're looking forward for the collaboration between the Nepalese folk instrument itself. And then also, if we can bring this music to a cult cross culture collaboration, then music can be known around the world. It's not just Nepal, but let me tell you the, my experience. I've traveled so many places in, around the world playing this instrument, and then most of the time what I hear from people is, you bring the sound of mountains, you bring the sound of the hills, and you bring the sound of the plains. So I'm so much fortunate to introduce my Nepal, our Nepal, to the world through Sarangi. <laughs> we need to come forward to preserve our heritage, not just preserve, but also to hand over this tradition to your father generation, isn't it? And uh, thank you very much.